Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri. I am joined today with a rock star in the precious metals industry, Jeff Clark, senior market analyst and accomplished author, speaker. Uh, he's with GoldSilver.com. Uh, somebody who is just a very sought after authority in the precious metal space. And I just want to have this conversation today. We're seeing a lot of craziness at the moment with equities, uh, you know, triple digit moves the last few days, uh, trade wars, tensions, and more importantly, at least for a lot of our audience, is the fact that gold and silver are having very material moves upwards, which again is a major payoff for those who've been positioning themselves in and curious about what is to come. Is this the end? I mean, is gold going to be topping out here? These are the conversations we're going to have today with Mr. Jeff Clark. Jeff, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Uh, it's great to be back with you, Kenneth. And uh, yeah, crush the street. That's exactly what gold and silver, I think, are doing right now. So <laughs> it's a great day to be talking. Yeah, well, gold is making some new all-time highs in a, a few currencies, notably the British pound, you know, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar. You know, the, the strength of the U.S. dollar is arguably what's uh, holding it back in U.S. dollar terms here. So I mean, what are your thoughts on just the general market at the moment as it pertains to gold? So yes, the uh, gold price is at all time record highs in, I believe the, la the last count was 72 currencies around the world. Uh, so almost everybody <laughs> except the US. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of reasons for that. One is the negative rate debt that has grown just tremendously around the world. So those investors have been turning to gold. Um, in fact, negative rate debt grew, uh, I just saw an article uh, last night that it grew by $1 trillion in two days. So that's, that's completely insane, of course. Uh, and then, you know, the big news right now has been the trade war with China, which wasn't even a catalyst, you know, maybe what, two years ago. Uh, so, chi you know, China's devaluing their currency. It's not the lowest level since 2008. Um, and then central banks have continued to buy. In fact, not a lot of people know this, but Poland bought over 100 tons of gold in the second quarter, the most by any central bank since 2009. So there's a lot of, you know, momentum with gold right now. There's a lot of reasons to be buying it. Um, and to be honest with you, I think this is just act one. You know, this, this uptick here we've seen in gold and silver, it's, it's very fun. Uh, it's significant. It's meaningful, uh, both from a fundamental and a technical standpoint, which we can talk about if you want. Uh, but this is just act one. There will probably be a pullback here at some point. And then we'll be off uh, into Act Two. So we have a long way to go with gold and silver. I really think there's going to be a lot more fun yet ahead, despite the fact that we'll probably have some sort of pullback here at some point. Yeah, and it, we got to be in a different place than we were, you know, even a few months ago, where that resistance at 1360 roughly was just such a crucial number. I mean, we're at $1,500 plus gold right now. I mean, and this happened rather quickly. I mean, it was just it a couple did. of days ago we were, you know, below fourteen fifty, and you know now we're over fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, this is starting to feel very decisive, and momentum is starting to move into the space. That that's a very good way to put it. We've had a technical breakout above fourteen hundred, and and the reason I I put it that way is if you look at any chart, long term chart of gold, you'll see that fourteen hundred was really a, a ceiling for many many years, like five or six years. Uh, so we broke above that, and to chartists, I'm, I'm not a, a technical analyst, but to chartists, that was very significant in, in portends higher prices. And then, just like you said, today, just today, we had the psychological break above $1,500. <clears throat> Pardon me, that, <clears throat> that's the first time since 2013. And if you look at the trading ranges of, of gold and silver, um, I did an article we just released 30 minutes ago on our site at goldsilver.com, and it looks at the trading ranges of gold, and now we have not just higher highs, but we've had higher lows in the gold price 
for four years now. So all of those things are, you know, very decisive uh, movements and they're indicative that, you know, we're, we've got a lot of momentum here. There's a, a long way to go despite, you know, maybe some pullback at some point, but it's very significant. It's material and we are off to the races. So Jeff, I, I got to ask you, and, and it, I don't want you to see this as like you trying to predict the price. I'm not going to try to get a price prediction out of you, but if you were to say, you know, if there was a point when gold got too expensive, you're like, okay, I should probably sell some gold here. Um, you know, what number roughly would that be? And, you know, what would you feel confident or comfortable still owning gold? I mean, at $3,000 gold, are you still, do you still hold it? Do you still, do you think that's a very reasonable cheap price for gold? And at what point does it get, start to get maybe a little pricey in your opinion for you? Yeah, that, that's a fair question, but of course you can't really answer. The, the reason is because we don't know what the circumstances will be at the time. It, it may be a slow rise to $3,000 without any sort of you know, uh, mania or large mainstream participation or something like that, or the crisis, you know, some sort of crisis may just be beginning. Uh, so you have to determine those things at the time. Uh, but generally speaking, in the long-term view, you know, the, the circumstances that we're in right now, um, I fully expect to see gold somewhere in the $3,000 to $5,000 range. Um, I think before it's all over, that's probably where we're headed. Uh, now, it, it, it could be a little lower than that. It could be higher than that. I hope it's not, I hope it's not $10,000 gold. And, and, you know, a lot of people, they would think, yeah, $10,000 gold, <laughs> but that would imply, you know, a very ugly world uh, around us. So I, I actually hope it doesn't go too crazy, but if it does, uh, it's, it's going to provide the kind of protection that, that we all need for our finances and for our portfolio and perhaps most importantly, our lifestyle. So there's not a fair price for gold, uh, that's that's a subjective thing because gold is is more money than anything else. We we don't give a fair value to gold because you know Indians are buying less this year or they're buying more this year. It's not based on anything like that. Jewelry use, industrial use, anything like that at all. We so are if playing. Gold does go to the three thousand to five thousand dollar range, which I fully expect it to happen. Do you? Do you take money off the table at that point, or is it something? Is that just like a very fair price, in your opinion, with the caveat of all you've said? Uh, is that a price where you hold on to it still and go, "Hey, I'm happy I own it. I'm happy it's here, but you know, I still think it's prudent to hold it at these prices." Right. The the answer to that question for me is I will be uh, shifting wealth from gold and silver to other undervalued assets when that time comes, regardless of what that price may be. That price could be 2,500 or that price could be 10,000, but I will be exiting the precious metal sector personally, uh, probably 90% of, of my holdings at that time because I wanna capitalize on the wealth transfer. I wanna capital, I wanna lock in a profit I want to lock in a huge gain, what I think will be a huge gain, whether it's gold or gold stocks. Uh, but I'll probably hold on to a little bit, you know, maybe to give my kids. And, and again, this is a determination you kind of have to make at the time. But at some point, yes, I do expect to, for the most part, exit the precious metal sector when we get to that time. So I'd love to talk to you about silver as well. Uh, in this environment, you know, gold moved first. I mean, throughout the end of May through June, we saw this massive move in gold. Gold would move up 2%. Silver would be flat or, you know, move up with a small tick. And we're starting to see silver really play some catch up here. Uh, I'm looking at it now. Silver is up 4%. Gold's up 2%. So we're seeing this outpacing of silver take place in this environment, which was different than we saw maybe a few weeks ago. What's your thoughts on this? So in that article I just did today, we showed the trading ranges and it's quite eye-opening. 
first of all, you have the breakout in gold. That's very clear with almost any chart you pull up of gold, you're, you're gonna see a breakout, higher highs, higher lows. It's, it's clear there's a breakout in gold. If you lay the silver chart over the gold chart, you will see no breakout in silver. Despite it being up something like 18% now or, or whatever it is from its May low, it's still trading in a range. It hasn't broken out yet. It's still below its 2018 high, let's put it that way. So it hasn't even re got back to that point, whereas gold has shot past its 2018 high. It's going back to its 2013 levels now. So the, the, while, while silver is doing well and the gold-silver ratio has come down, it, it peaked at, I think, about 93, and it's about, what, 88 now. So it's coming down, so there is some catch-up going on there. There's a long way to go for silver, and it has not broken out yet. And when it does, that will imply much higher prices in, in both the short term and the long term for silver. So it's going to be very interesting to see when that happens. Uh, but, you know, the point is there's, there's no breakout yet. And so there's a lot, you know, more ahead for silver relative to gold. Uh, whenever that move does come. And this is actually normal. I'll just say this real quick. Um, this is actually very normal. It, it, I looked at the past five bull markets in precious metals since the 1970s and uh, looked at the gold price movement and the silver price movement. And in three out of the five cases, gold outperformed silver in the beginning stages. It always moved first. And then silver would play catch up and of course, it always passed gold's performance. In only one occasion did silver lead in the bull market, and every other case, it, it, it either <clears throat> uh, you know, held hands with gold or it lagged gold in most cases. Uh, but in every case, it outperformed gold before the bull market was over. So what we're seeing right now in silver, this lag in silver, even though the gold-silver ratio has come down, it's still lagging gold overall. That is actually normal. That is actually, we have historical precedence that this is actually normal behavior for silver and that normally silver will catch up to gold and pass it. And so that's what we have yet to look forward to with silver. So I think that's a critical thing to be aware of with silver right now is to not get discouraged and enjoy the ride. And there's a lot more ahead because it will outperform gold before this is all over. Well, gold is what only... 20%, 25% off its high, roughly, I got to do the math. But um, silver, I mean, it still has 200% to go to get to its 2011 all-time high. So it's actually, just from those metrics alone, just getting back to where they were in 2011, that's just a very simple way to, to see the opportunity that is in silver. Um, so do you think that $49, $50 silver is a, a realistic number? Um, or is it, did it go too far in front of itself back in 2011? You think that, you know, maybe this time around um, we should be looking at $35 or, or $40 silver? Um, that's a good question. And the thing about silver is that I, I'm sure a lot of your audience knows this, but it's a much smaller market. So it's more volatile. It takes less money to impact its price and move its price. And so just a little bit of money coming into it relative to gold or any other market for that matter will move its price to a much greater degree. So, uh, you know, in 2011, when you saw the big spike up to $48, $49 it didn't take a whole lot of money for that to happen relative to gold. And so I do expect silver to see that again. If, you, if, you're, a, if you're a bullish on precious metals at all, silver is going to outperform by default because it's a smaller market. It's a teeny tiny market on the global marketplace. It's like 0.02% of all global financial assets. So it's a teeny tiny market. It does not take much money at all to move its price. And so, yes, I do think we're going to see, um, you know, a very big upsurge in silver once the public gets interested in it. They're not really interested in silver. All the news is about gold right now. So the mainstream is really not participating in silver much at all. Uh, even the ET on an ETF basis, the gold ETFs are doing better than the silver ETFs. So uh, I, I think on a relative basis, it's the, the story is gold right now. 
but that story will shift to silver at some point. So yes, I, I think it's you know entirely conceivable we'll see $50 silver. I would not be surprised if we see $100 silver either. I'm not necessarily banking on that, but I would not be surprised to see it at all either. Right. Well, the markets have a way of shocking us uh, one way or another. That's one thing I've learned uh, over the past few number of years here. Uh, when it comes to what you're talking about with gold moving first, I feel like we saw that largely with even Bitcoin. Bitcoin would have these large moves up. It would gain market share. And then, you know, when there was some sort of confidence in the, the market, we would see the rest of them start to play catch up and perform even better than, you know, the, the first mover, the, the dominator does, which, you know, is arguably uh, safer and less speculative. So it seems like the way the markets are, you know, you have the first mover, the, the big one move first, and then as confidence starts to settle in, the rest start to follow. Uh, would you agree with that when it comes to, you know, crypto and, and maybe other sectors of the economy? Um, I look at Bitcoin as uh, a new invention. I, I look at it as uh, the wheel or fire <laughs> or, you know, maybe perhaps a better example, um, the Internet. You know, we had we had the Internet bubble back in the 1990s into 2000. It was a new invention. That's how I view Bitcoin. The reason I'm not an investor in Bitcoin at this time, though, is because, A, it's a little too volatile for me. I, I was an investor in Bitcoin. I am not currently. Um, it is a little more volatile. It's more speculative. But it is a new invention. It's, it's here to stay, in my opinion. Um, and it's a great speculation. For me personally, I, I choose to speculate more in gold and silver mining stocks. Um, but Bitcoin is is something that's going to be here to stay it's going to invade almost every aspect of our our lives um and so i think it's it's going to be uh something that's going to be uh you know monumentous on on, on how we live our lives and how things are done so uh there's a lot of shake up in that, in that industry that still needs to occur there is um the barrier to entry needs to definitely be lowered so that the mainstream can participate more easily uh, in the crypto world. Uh, but uh, this is a new invention. It's, it's here to stay and it's, it's going to impact on our lives in big ways going forward. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but that's my <laughs> overall view of, of the crypto world right now. Right. No, no, no. That's powerful. Uh, and I tend to agree with you in, in many ways regarding that. Uh, so let's shift the conversation to equities and what we're seeing in the markets obviously seems to be inversely correlated to what we're seeing with gold and silver, which doesn't always move with the markets. You know, sometimes we have these uh, uh, massive down days in stocks and it, you know, moves gold and silver down with it or, you know, massive down days in stocks and gold and silver move higher like we're seeing, you know, over the past couple of days, kind of the, the sentiment of the market is volatile. So gold and silver are responding accordingly. Uh, but, Having said that, what are your current thoughts on the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the U.S. economy as it pertains to stocks, and does that play into the hands of what we're seeing with gold and silver? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly equities have been overvalued for some time right now, regardless of how you measured it, you know, by GDP, uh, by the CAPE ratio, by PE ratios, that's been going on for some time. So a correction was really not going to be all that surprising. Um, how this pertains to gold, though, is that I, I think as you and your listeners know, gold is generally inversely correlated to stocks. Stocks do good when the economy is doing good. And when the economy is doing good, do you really need to own gold? That's kind of the traditional view. And so it's not surprising that they're inversely correlated, not necessarily on a daily basis, but on a long-term basis. Well, if you look at the gold S&P 500 ratio of, of those two assets, uh, it's been, it's near all-time lows as, as it is, uh, you know, right now, despite the rise in gold recently and, and the fall in equities. 
the ratio is still near all-time lows. And so there is a lot of catch-up that could occur there if the ratio were to return to some of its previous highs. Um, you know, it's, it's below one right now, obviously, uh, but it was uh, almost six back in 1970. It was over two in 1987. It was over one and a half just in 2011. And here we are at like 0.5 or something like that. So there's, you know, if you believe that we could return to those kind of ratios, that clearly implies that gold is going to be moving much higher relative to stocks and stocks are going to be moving much lower. So there's a, a very good article on our site uh, that shows the research of this and it's titled Dear Stock Investor, I'm about to steal profits right out of your brokerage account. Mm -hmm. And that's because if, if the ratio returns to match any of the previous highs, that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be stock investors that are going to grow tired of seeing losses in their portfolio. They're going to watch and watch and watch gold move higher and higher and higher. They're going to sell their stocks and they're going to buy gold. And I, I do think that is very likely uh, going to occur at some point. It, when you look at it that way, really, Kenneth, we're, we're kind of just getting started here. Like I said, it's really just act one right now with gold and silver. There are many acts to follow, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I think another thing that's notable is we're seeing the, the mining sector start to move. I, I was looking at some research uh, of the mining sector when gold was approaching $1,400 and it didn't even, the valuation of the miners didn't even reach where they were at the height of the 2018, uh, you know, bounce we saw when gold was moving higher. It really was this just beat down of confidence that we've seen in the precious metals industry that it's just taking so much more for confidence to enter the space but we really are starting to see the miners move up with some conviction now, which I think is very exciting. You know, it's taken $1,500 gold, you know, $1,400 breaking out of that for uh, investors to say, okay, I, I believe this move now. And the miners are starting to reflect that, which I think is extremely exciting for those of us positioned accordingly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my, you know, gold and silver mining stocks are after just – you know, right after my heart here, you know, so those are things I, I really follow. I'm invested heavily in them. Um, I own a lot of gold and silver too, of course, but I'm invested heavily in it because I used to work for KC Research as a mining analyst. And so that's what we followed. So, uh, you know, at some point I knew this breakout would have to occur and it would include the stocks. And of course, the stocks are a great way to get leverage to gold and silver. So uh, they, and they are showing that they're just now beginning to show that leverage and they are waking up from a long slumber you could say so uh if gold and silver have a long way to go then uh the, the mining stocks have much much further to go so you know we could easily see you know tenfold returns there in some of those the, the better mining stocks and for some of the juniors uh, even more than that so uh, that that's this has happened before uh, and i do think it'll happen again so and by the way that can happen even with the S&P going down or being flat. Uh, the S&P was up a, a whopping 11% in the 1970s decade. That's all it climbed. And there were two crashes in the middle of that. And yet gold and gold stocks, you know, rose uh, uh, tremendously. It was the biggest bull market in gold and gold stocks was back then while all that was going on with equities, the general equity market. So uh, there's historical precedence that even if we have, you know, a weakness or a bear market in common stocks that gold stocks can still do well if gold is. Uh, Jeff, it's truly an un unforgettable time, I think, uh, that we're seeing here in 2019, the summer of 2019, the start of this uh, bull market. And I think it's very exciting, uh, especially as it pertains to the levered positions that we do have in the mining sector. So a uh, very exciting time. Jeff, if people want to learn more about what you do, your work, and uh, ways that you know you can serve them, uh, please let them know about your your services, your website, and uh, you know what they can do at goldsilver.com. The best thing anyone can do is just go to our website at goldsilver.com 
and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, I think a lot of people, if they're familiar with Mike Maloney, know that he is very heavy into education. He wants people to educate themselves about what's going on and then take steps to protect themselves. Uh, that's the arm of the company I work for is the research arm. So we do provide a lot of education, a lot of research. And if you sign up for our newsletter, you actually get that research and that education before we release it to the public. So you get it immediately and can even act upon it if you so choose to. So that's the best way to uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, we don't bombard people <laughs> with, with lots of things. We don't sell your information or anything like that. So uh, but it, it is a good way to uh, keep in contact, not just with us, but with the markets, because we do provide not just, you know, news items or journalistic content, but actual research and education that uh, we think a lot of people find valuable. So, um, so that's the yeah, best way to start. Yeah, it's truly is uh, everyone. Some of the best material on the internet, especially when it pertains to the markets and how it relates to gold and silver and you know really some of the other commodities so a very very exciting and uh we're very grateful for your time here jeff here at crush the street thank you so much for coming on the show with me today you're absolutely welcome let's do it again sometime and and we've got a long way to go here so um you know watch for a pullback uh but uh again we're in act one and several acts to follow so it's going to be fun